Hello, today we're at ESMO 2018 speaking with Harpreet Wasan about the tumour biology of pancreatic cancer. Thank you for joining us today, Harpreet. To start off, can you tell us about how you became involved in researching pancreatic cancer and what you say would be your greatest career achievement thus far? So the, when I became a senior doctor and a consultant in the National Health Service, I targeted cancers with unmet needs and pancreatic cancer was one of the ones at the top of the list. And because I have an interest in gastrointestinal oncology uh, and we have a very big um, pancreatic unit uh, where I work, it was very natural to gravitate towards pancreatic cancer. And of course, because the survivals were very poor and it was an unmet need, it was very important to develop programs, research as well as translation programs to try and improve this. I also, at the same time as I was appointed, I actually, uh, gemcitabine just was coming into the UK and they hadn't been approved by uh, NICE, which is the organization that approves drugs in the UK. So I was asked at that point to consider uh, trying to help uh, patients get access to gemcitabine. So I did the NICE submission and so from that point onwards, it was quite easy to be part of the development team for gemcitabine based developments around pancreatic cancer because that was the first treatment that showed a benefit. Um, so that's how I became involved. Uh, achievements is difficult. Um, I would say that uh, the fact that I have uh, built up a research team and built up, built up over um, 12 people in our research team to focus on uh, pancreatic cancer, both clinical and laboratory, and therefore allow uh, their interaction with patients and cancer developments and support for patients is probably the most satisfying, I would say. Uh, in terms of research achievements, we've been involved in almost every single pivotal trial uh, that has, has led to uh, a positive development. Um, so that's been a, a very positive uh, uh, feeling in the, in the community of uh, the patients we treat, uh, that we're doing something on a constant basis to have improvements uh, every few years. Um, the, the final thing probably is also looking for niche areas where we've now uh, identified in our research areas some niche areas that we can move on and develop. Thank you for that. Could you tell us about the current understanding of the tumour biology of pancreatic cancer? So pancreatic cancer is probably the, one of the most complex of all cancers. So most cancers, uh, the systems in terms of understanding the changes in the biology or the DNA level or the level of the way the cell organises itself um, can be split into five or ten categories. It's possible that in pancreatic cancer this could be 15 or 20 or even 30 categories. So that creates a real challenge and those, the biologies of those categories are very uh, diverse and very heterogeneous. They can be broadly put into various categories which might be of interest but at this moment in time we don't have a selection system in the clinic to select those categories. But for instance, particularly with our lab research, we are involved probably in the largest category, which is to do with um, cancers which are sensitive because the DNA damage repair pathway is somehow altered. Uh, and that probably forms up to possibly up to about a third of pancreatic cancer. So we've been focusing on the biology of that. But the other biologies are actually so diverse, you could choose almost any system in the cancer cell and it would be abnormal in pancreatic cancer. Okay, so your research involves identifying drivers of cancer progression. Could you tell us about the potential role of the enzyme asparaginase in treating pancreatic cancer? So part of the uh, development of cancer cell survival is to live in very bizarre and um, difficult conditions. And that could be driven through uh, cells growing very fast and then creating hypoxia but also because of most, of most pancreatic cancer cells are RAS mutant. And this is a very common mutation, which is a real challenge for cancer researchers everywhere because it creates diverse changes in the system in the cell. So in this context, it appears that um, the energy supply within the cell, which is dependent on various amino acids, uh, is changed so that the uh, asparagine or the asparaginase, uh, which is coupled, um, is disrupted in terms of its balance. And so if cells are more dependent on asparagine because of this disruption, 
there could be an approach, as there is in leukemia, for instance, of targeting the asparagine, the asparagine pathway with asparaginase. Okay, so eriaspase consists of the enzyme L-asparaginase encapsulated in red blood cells. Could you give us a bit of a brief overview of the mechanism of action of eriaspase and why the encapsulation is such an important component? So because the, um, the, the style of the way that this drug has been developed and delivered is so unique, it appears that the encapsulation has two effects. Mm -hmm. One is to protect it from natural degradation in the, in the body, which also then reduces the side effects of that particular drug. But the second is there may be very, uh, a very uh, uh, a covert mechanism by which these cells are taken up in the cancer cell environment, particularly pancreatic cancer, as judged by the phase two study. So the fact that it's encapsulated may protect it a long way to get to the cancer cell and therefore have higher concentrations within the cancer cell environment. Thank you for that. So what further advances do you envisage with respect to pancreatic cancer in the coming years? So I think there will be a promise in the, in the, in the research that's been going on over the last 20 years in the DNA damage repair area. So this could either be through drugs that target DNA damage specifically, particularly drugs like the PARP, PARP inhibitors, uh, which with or without chemotherapy may actually also play a role. The combination of uh, active treatments already, such as Fulfirinox, are targeting the DNA damage pathway repair as well. So I think the synergy between those two will create at least about a quarter to a third of pancreatic cancers, which may be specifically targeted in that area. The possibility of trying to break down the environment around the pancreatic cancer cells is also potentially exciting. So we're waiting for the results of the pivotal trial which thins the environment so we can get more drug delivery. And that's not that different to the asparaginase encapsulation concept rather than the direct mechanism. So I think those two areas of, of drug delivery improving and the DNA repair pathway being targeted more specifically are probably going to be the main advantages. The other big advantage which has happened this year, of course, and sort of um, is, is a very exciting time is the fact that the patients who are who are able to have an operation, which there's only about 10%, have a better survival with the adjuvant use of drugs, so the adjuvant use of Fulfirinox. So that's probably been the most practice-changing development for our patients with really significant clinical benefits for those patients improving cure rates. What are your plans for the next few years? What further investigations do you have in the pipeline? So apart from doing clinical trials in diverse areas, because I think the, you have to cover the whole spectrum of pancreatic cancer. Um, we are focusing on our research, which has identified uh, uh, a protein pathway, which has not been investigated in pancreatic cancer. So we looked at um, the, the way that around 630 uh, DNA damage repair genes behaved um, in, cell, in a cell line. And what we found was that the protein signal, the protein control signal, something called the ubiquitin pathway, seems to be disrupted and that's never been described before. So we're now looking for partners to look at that, how we can inhibit that target. So there is already a drug in myeloma that does that, uh, but in fact that drug didn't work in our cell system. So we're looking for a specific, and this may be a, a new avenue, a new treatment paradigm for some pancreatic cancer patients. What have been your favorite talks from this year's ESMO meeting? So I suppose it is the carry on of what I said earlier, which is the, the what has really made a difference to patients, which is the uh, survival increase with the uh, Fulfirinox adjuvant. I think that's been the major change. Um, the science and the biology of understanding both pancreatic cancer, the environment, and also the, uh, the immuno, immuno oncology landscape around pancreatic cancer has also been uh, more interesting, although in terms of therapeutic developments, we're still at a bit of a barrier there but the understanding of it is important to get to that step. Thank you for joining us today, Harpreet. And thank you all for watching. If you'd like to find out anything more about pancreatic cancer, make sure to visit oncologycentral.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook. Thank you for watching.